Hey guys, Code with Jay here, and today I am back with another tutorial teaching you more on Polygon. I got some comments on some of my videos asking how we can now expand our graphing and use it to graph multiple stocks and get data from multiple stocks. So I would strongly recommend that you go watch the older Polygon videos to see how to set up and get basic stock data before you continue watching this. Or you could just follow along, whatever works for you. To get started, make sure you that in your virtual studio code that you have your config.py and that has the API key that was given to you by Polygon. Now we're going to go ahead and make a new folder. We're going to call this app.py. If I could type, that's not how you spell pi. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with all our imports. Now just to switch it up and show you guys what other web frameworks that like exist out there. We're going to be using Dash. Now, Dash is a little more popular than Flask, and you'll see why in a minute here because it kind of lets us programmatically enter in our HTML rather than having all the templates. To start, make sure you have the Dash requirements installed as well as the matplotlib installed. All of this will be in the description down below. But we're going to go ahead and get started by saying from Dash, we want to import Dash with a capital D, HTML, and DCC. Next thing we want to do is we want to say from dash dot dependencies, you're going to import input and output. Other things we're going to need is, like I mentioned, we're going to need to import matplotlib. And right under this, we're just going to quickly say matplotlib dot use and act. Now we're also to plot the graph, we're going to do what we're familiar with in the older tutorials and we're going to say import plotly and instead of just import properly, we'll say from plotly, we'll import graph objects and just like last time we'll import this as go so we don't have to write graph objects every single time. Just like in our other polygon tutorials, now we're going to need our polygon so we're going to say from polygon. We're going to import our REST client. In order to get the information from our sending HTTP request to Polygon, we're going to need to say from your lib3, import HTTP response. And we're also going to need to say from typing, import cast. We're almost done here. We're going to just need JSON. We're going to need pandas. And we're going to need our config file that we made. So import your config file. As for pandas, the most common method is importing it as pd. And this should be all the dependencies we need. Make sure you get these all down, make sure they're all installed correctly on your system, and you shouldn't have any errors. Now we can get started by connecting to Polygon. So to connect to Polygon, we're going to say client is equal to, we're going to say rest client. And this is where we pass in the API key that we set up in the beginning. Now we're going to set up dash. So similarly to Flask, we're going to say app is equal to dash, and we're going to pass it name. Now, all the way at the bottom here, just hit enter a bunch of times. What we want to do is we want to say if underscore name is equal to with two equals underscore two underscores main two underscores again. We're going to say app dot run server. And in here, we're going to set debug and we're going to set that equal to true. Now that we got the basis for the dash setup. You can see how similar it is to Flask, where we would instead have app is Flask, pass name, and have this statement here as well. And it would just be app.run for Flask. Now what we can do is actually get the HTML side of things set up. So inside of our app, what we're going to do is we're going to say app.layout. And we're going to say this is an HTML div. And inside this div, now make sure you see that there are parentheses here. 
And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting square brackets. We're going to go ahead and enter here. And essentially, we're going to start creating what our site looks like. So to get started, I'm going to say HTML.header1. And I'll just call this stock graphs. You can name this whatever you would like. Then we're going to say comma, because remember, we're in a list. And we're going to say DCC dot drop down. And we're going to give this an ID of stock list. So the stock list is going to be all the stocks we want to give options for. So let's go ahead and just do a couple here. So in our options, we're going to say common here and enter. So our options that we're going to give to the user are whatever stocks you'd like. Let's go ahead and put another square bracket in here. Hit enter. We're going to use some curly braces now. And this is where we're going to start giving some keys and some values. So in here, I'm going to say our first label is going to be, let's start with Apple. And the value, and this is going to be the stock ticker for Apple, which I believe AAPL. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a comma outside of this. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste this a couple times. I'm going to go ahead and change it. Another one to Google. Let's do Microsoft and let's do Amazon. Again, don't forget to change the values. So for Google, it's all caps G O O G L. For Microsoft, it's MSFT. And for Amazon, it is AMZN. Again, you can keep going here. You can keep adding more tickers uh, if you'd like. Just copy and paste and make sure you add the commas. For your last one, you do not need the comma. Now, we need to give a default value as to what is going to show up right when we open the page. So we're under here, we're going to put a comma, hit enter, say value, and we're going to say that's equal to AAPL. So this will be our default value whenever the application opens. I'm going to hit, go ahead, enter here so I can easily identify my closing brace, put a comma here, and now this is where we're going to build the graph or set an area for the graph. So dcc.graph, and we're going to say this has an ID of stock. Don't forget the quote stock graph. Once we have that, we can start setting up the styles for it. So don't forget a comma here and say, let's bring up our curly brace. So I brought up the curly brace here. This is ending out this curly brace up here for our div. We're going to put a comma after it. And right underneath this, we're going to quickly just say the style is going to be, we're going to say the width is, let's just say 500. Again, experiment with these values, try to figure out what works for your site or how to customize it for your needs. So that should be everything for this beginning layout. Now, the next thing we're going to need to do is What is happening here? It wasn't closed. Aha. Let's see. This is closed. This is closed. Aha. So style here, right here, instead of the, the open braces, we want to say width and 500 just like up top up here that should fix everything now underneath this basically what we're going to do is get the apps callback so right here we're going to say this is the callback decorator and we'll say at at sign app dot callback and the output is going to be the stock graph and the figure. After this, in between the two closing parentheses, put a comma here and another square brace. 
is going to say input and the things that we're going to be inputting is from the stock list and we're going to need the value from that stock list. Here's our stock list. Here's all our inputs. Here's the values. Once you have that set up, right underneath this, we can start with our function call and that's going to be our graph. Here, we're going to pass our selected dropdown value. And inside here, this is where we can start what is very similarly seen in all of our older Polygon videos. Again, I really recommend you go back and watch it because I will be kind of flying through it here. We're going to be saying ags is equal to cast. We're going to go ahead and put some open and close uh, regular braces there. And we're going to say, HTTP, we're going to pass HTTP response, comma. Now we're going to go to our client. We're going to say dot get ags. And inside here, we're going to pass it a couple values. We need to pass it our selected dropdown value. So what ticker we're doing, just like if you follow the polygon tutorial or the documentation, we'll have a one here. We can have our day, minute, depending on what bars you want. Uh, we're going to need a start date. So let's go ahead and start with, I don't know, 22 May 20th. And let's end at 2022, I don't know, 11, 11. Again, any dates work here. You don't have to hard code them. You can use something like date time, another library, to dynamically enter these dates. And right below this, we'll say raw equals true. After that, make sure to put a comma after this brace, after this closing brace. And now is the time we can start playing with the data. If you remember from last time, this returned us JSON. So we need to say data equals JSON.loads and get the data that was received. Now that we loaded up the JSON data, we're going to go ahead and loop through. And if you remember what we, in the last video, when we went through all of the options, we had to find our way to get the values. So what we'll do is say for item and data, when we hit the item that is the results, we are going to grab that. So to grab that, we're going to say raw data is equal to data item. So everything in the results category that it gives us back, we're going to store in another array called raw data. Inside of raw data is now a bunch more categories and we're going to say for the bar in raw data and again another loop for the category within each bar because if you remember in each bar there was a c an h an l a o a t and so on a v a vw those uh, all stand for close high low open time uh volume volume weighted but to keep things short we'll say for category and bar and now we're going to say here for each one of those, right? So if the category is equal to C, we know that's our closed prices, right? Well, what do we want to do with these? Well, we want to store them in arrays. So let's get a bunch of arrays ready. We're going to say we're going to have a closed list. We're going to have a open list. We're going to have a, uh, what else do we need? A high list, a low list, and a closed list. Oh, we already have closed list. Perfect. We also need a time list then. Perfect. So close, open, high, low, and time. Now we can go ahead and start appending the values that we're getting. So we can say close list dot append. And here we're going to append bar category, the value that was stored. And we're going to repeat this. So LF this time category. And we're going to say if this is now equal to H or the high. Now we can say high list dot append bar category and keep repeating elif category is equal to L or low. We're going to say low list is equal to or dot append the value that was in the bar. Again, elif category is equal to O. That's our opening. I spelled category wrong. And we can now say open list 
is now dot appending the bar category value. Lastly, we're also going to need our time. This one's going to have a little more to do than just appending it straight into. Uh, instead, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to convert. Polygon gives it to you in a millisecond time format. So we're just going to have to convert that into a normal date that we can read. So we're going to say LF category is equal to T. We know we're in the times. Now we can say time list is, uh, we can append. And what we want to do is, did that we import pandas as PD, correct? So we'll say PD.timestamp. And we can in here say pass the value that we get. So the millisecond value that we were given, we can let it know that the time zone that Polygon uses is GMT and the unit that Polygon uses is milliseconds. And that will go ahead and convert it to something like May 20th or November 11th instead of some big float value. Now we can actually start by creating our graph. So just like in the old tutorials, we'll say fig equals go dot figure. So we've created a new fig and now we can start adding lines to it. So we're going to say fig dot add trace. And in here, we're going to say go dot candlestick. Now the candlestick needs a X axis and that's going to be our dates. So that's why we did the time list. We're going to need the open and that was our open list. We're going to need the high and that's our high list. Our low, which is our low list. Our close, which was our close list. And we can give it a name and we'll just say this stock data. Now, one last thing I want to do is I want to just give our graph a dark mode look. So I want to say uh, fig.update layout. And another thing we're going to do here is hide another slider that Plotly puts there by default. So we'll say x axis range slider visible if I can spell visible is equal to false. And let me see if I spelled that correctly, visible range slider and x axis, correct. And the only thing I didn't spell correctly was false. And then we'll use a template and we'll set that to plotly dark. Now that we have our candlestick being formed and our graph hiding the that weird slider at the bottom and it's in dark mode we need to update it or we need to return it so return fig and this would be everything we need to make a drop down graph so if we go ahead and save this and we go ahead and run this you should see similar to flask that instead it says dash is running on exactly what Flask would be running at, but at a different port. To open this, we're going to hit control click, and that should open up whatever your main browser is. And there it is. There's our default values for Apple. And here we have it starting from May 20th, ending on November 11th. Our slider is working correctly. If you want to switch to Google, you can see everything adjusts automatically. And this is how we can basically start forming graphs for multiple stocks and making it in a usable interface for you guys to add on to, whether it's adding and combining the paper trading video or anything that you have custom. If you have any questions, if you need any help, please feel free to comment down below. Thank you guys for watching so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.